Hi, good morning. Very quickly, I am not happy today and I actually want to hammer on um, some certain things that we are currently going through in our nation and we are pretending as if it's not telling on us. It's actually telling on us. So, um, yesterday I stumbled on a post on Twitter and the post got to me. Not just got to me, but the post actually made me reflect on certain things that uh, have been happening and how I've been trying to shy away from it, but I decided to speak out. So, the young man tweeted, Yesterday, I lost my job. I lost my job in a real estate company due to poor sales. Paul says that happened because people were threatened during the 2023 elections, which made a lot of potential clients lose confidence in buying properties in Lagos. So this man lost his job because potential clients who were supposed to buy properties lost confidence after the 2023 general elections in Nigeria. And then I reflected that a while ago I did a piece when the president was sworn in. And I said that the removal of the first subsidy will lead to the hike and the prices of building materials. I made that statement and I noticed some people came to my page and they wrote a lot of things. Some went as far as saying, I should face my business. I should not go into politics. I don't know anything about politics. And I looked at them and I laughed. Because you don't know me on YouTube. I decided to present my business to you on YouTube. You don't know how inclined I am in the political matters, not just in our nation, but globally. Won't it amaze you to see that this young boy sitting here talking to you is not inclined about political issues in this country? That you should be marveled. I saw a lot of comments and I noticed those comments uh, were spawned out, out of political affiliations, religious affiliations, ethnic affiliations. And that's why you think you can support evil. The removal of fuel subsidy. Is it bad that they remove the fuel subsidy? What is the storyline behind the removal of fuel subsidy? The storyline behind the removal of fuel subsidy is that there are cabas who have been milking the wealth of the nation, hiding under the guise of fuel subsidy. As such, we remove the fuel subsidy so that they do not have access to those funds again. Simply me. And now I'm asking the question what are those cabals? So you mean to say if the president is aware that the cabals are milking the wealth of the nation via the first subsidy? How are they ghosting the funds away? Ask that question. Oh, let's not go that way. So we remove the first subsidy. And immediately, the, fuel, the price of the fuel went up. The price of the fuel went up. And trust me, as Nigerians, we have no limits when it comes to being elastic. And so we also stretched and adjusted. Currently, as we speak, we're buying a fuel, a little fuel, for 520 naira right in my location. 520 naira for a liter of fuel. And so the president said, I want to remove the first subsidy so that those cabals who have been stealing the funds will no longer have access to it. Remove it. And in a matter of weeks, there's a claim that the government has been able to save 500 billion naira. Oh, wow, beautiful. We have three refineries in our nation. And the production capacity of those refineries is about 445,000 barrels per day. That's the production capacity of the three refineries 
put together. The question that a reasonable government should be asking is that how much will it cost us to fix those three refineries so that they can be running effectively? Instead, the government sat down and said, we want to give the people palliative. Billion people. The government said they want to pay 12 million poor people 8,000 naira every month. 8,000 naira to do what? To a family of five people. When you say people who are poor, they give birth to a lot of children. Yes. I did a piece a while ago and some person said poor people console themselves by giving birth to multiple numbers of children. So I need to say that there's the statistics that is informal, but it's correct. That poor people give birth to ch children a lot. So you want to give 8,000 naira to the acclaimed poor people for the next six months. What a country. What a kind, what a style of leadership. Are all this my problem? All these are not my problem. Now, what's my issue? Now, my issue is the consequence of all of all this. Now that the first subsidy has been removed, now a bag of cement is now sort of 5,000 or 5,001 or 5,000, so depending on your location. A length of 12 mm rod that was initially set for 4446 is now 5,300, 5,400. A trip of sand, 4 in 1 trip of sand. That was 50,000 euro, 60,000 euro. It's now 80,000 euro to 100,000 euro, depending on the community you want to get the sand. And so people will say, uh, let's just allow him to lead. Allow him to lead what? Allow him to lead who? To where? So you think that because of your affiliations, political party, Ethnic, religious, you can cover. You cannot cover the truth. Let me tell you the truth. You can cover it. Can you afford to buy a bag of cement? Where do you work? Where are you working? You are living in this country. Can you afford to buy a bag of cement? Can you afford to buy a length of road? Or you think you have built your three bedroom flat? You think you have built your four bedroom flat? So it's none of your business anymore. Where are your parents living? Your mother and your father, where are they living? Oh, you know what people, uh, especially our fathers, they don't like relocating from the house that they built themselves. Go and check the house. Is it ideal? Is it that kind of a house your parents are supposed to be living? If you think you're okay. And then most of the people who can even afford a building project in this country, as so we speak, and Nigerians who lives abroad. Most of the people who can afford the building project right now as we speak are Nigerians who live abroad. And these are people who over time because of where they've been and their current environment. They are exposed to sanity. And these are people who have lived in this country and they know what distrust is all about. They know that Nigerians don't have trust. You will hardly find a Nigerian that you can trust. All of a sudden they say, let them, let them be managing you people. And a project that is supposed to cost 1.8 million or 2 million maximum is now 3.84 million naira. And like, I don't understand. Uh -huh. Eh? 4 million for this project phase? They rather with the money. Why? Because if they even assess, assess the benefits, their children are not coming back to live in the country. Because of the level of insecurity and uh the instability in government policies to create businesses. Why then should they come and invest in your country? And then you think we can continue to be like instead of each and every one of us to come out and tell the government that this cannot continue to be like this. I want to use this medium to salute each and every one of you who currently have a building project running in the country. I salute you all. Thank you for your resilience. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your determination. 
I can relate to how much you guys are spending on your project. And I want to beg any engineer watching me at this point, please don't compromise. I know that the hiking, the prices of building materials will lead to engineers and even project owners compromise. Our engineer, is there any way we can do it to ensure that we limit the cost of doing this? And because the engineer wants a project, the engineer will do what? The engineer may compromise. Please, I want to beg every engineer watching at this point. Please, if you know that the level of the compromise you want to attain will affect the integrity of the job, please don't do it. Advise the client. Tell the client. They will, they will kind of listen to you. Trust me. Tell the client that look at this is the consequence if we do this. I would advise that we exercise a little bit patient so we can get the funds to execute the project as standard as it should be. Trust me, they will listen to you. Trust me. I want to use this medium to say a very big thank you to everyone executing the project in the country. Please keep pushing. And don't forget that those of us who mean well for this nation will continually speak up and ensure that not until we get the government right in this nation, we won't keep quiet. Trust me, we will continue to speak up. Thank you and God bless you. Don't forget my name, Citizen Victor Olisa.